Hey guys, I have in front of me the 12,000 watt inverter from Sun Gold Power that I reviewed several weeks ago. In that original video I noted that the MPPT charge controller this inverter comes with looks very similar if not identical to the PCM60X charge controller from MPP Solar. However, it wasn't until recently that I thought about this a little more and uh, this inverter supports multiple types of batteries, various forms of lead acid, it supports lithium iron phosphate and so forth and you can select that with a small dial on the front of the inverter. However, I noted that on the wiring of this charge controller here, we have two conductors here for the PV input and two conductors for the DC output, and there are no communications cables coming from uh, the control board of this inverter down to this charge controller. And we can see over here that the positive from the charge controller comes up to the positive bus bar, and the negative cable comes up to the negative bus bar. So it doesn't appear that there is any way for this inverter to control the charge voltage or even control this charger at all. In today's video what I thought I would do is I want to pull this board off of the inverter. I also pulled one of my PCM60X controllers from service. Uh, so I'm going to take that apart and we're going to compare these boards side by side, see what the difference is and see if we can get the PCM60X control module to communicate with this board and see what these settings are in this charger. And to remove this board, there are simply uh, four 8mm bolts, and then the four power connections here in the front. And as always, the typical disclaimer, there can be potentially hazardous voltages on these capacitors and then these circuits, so it's really not a good idea to try servicing these components at home. Okay, so on the left, I have the PCM60X charge controller from MPP Solar, and on the right, I have the charger board removed from the Sun Gold Power Inverter. Okay, now with the cover off here, you can see how these start to look even more similar. Now this one does have the communications board here, which sits on top. This one does not. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And we see this communications board connects with a 4-pin connector on the left and a 5-pin connector on the top. One connector goes here and one goes up here. And this controller has the exact same ports located here and here. Additionally, on the PCM60X, we have this larger connector here which went from this top port on the upper left here to the front display with the buttons and we also see the same corresponding connector on the right side here. Now one thing I do want to note too is that the MPP solar charge controller is a couple of years old. It's got to be somewhere anywhere from three to uh, five years at this point. I do have three of these controllers and I don't know which one was purchased when and there are no date or time code stamps on them. So if we start at the base of the controller here, four, we can see we have the same capacitors here. Uh, the controller on the right has two additional capacitors, one located here, and one would be located over here where there is not uh, one soldered on the left. However, the left controller here does have space on the circuit board for both of those to be soldered on. We have uh, different terminal studs, however, they are in the same place and they are labeled exactly the same. Uh, solar positive, solar negative, battery negative, battery positive. Additionally, I see space on the right side where the larger connector would be soldered, and I see space on the left where the smaller connector would be soldered. So the circuit board is built to accommodate uh, both of these different types of connectors. On the right hand side here we see a raised circuit board with a few components, and this does extend a little bit further on the right controller than the left. We can see both controllers have a very similar pair of isolation relays here. They are different brands and models, however they are both rated for uh, 14 volts at 70 amps. We have the same four electrolytic capacitors. Both sets are rated for 330 microfarads. The left is rated for 160 volts, while the right is rated for 200 volts. And that is an improvement in my opinion on this controller. The max open circuit voltage is 150 volts DC, which is awfully close to the 160 volt rating on this controller. This uh, 200 volt capacitor gives a little bit more headroom for any you know cold weather or miswiring from damaging your controller. And we see the FET transistors are in the same place. However, the one on the left is covered with an additional piece of aluminum. The one on the right are simply bolted into the heatsink. The part number on the left transistor is 1620A, and the part number on the right transistor is IFRB4115. But it should also be noted that the controller on the left is rated for 60 amps, and the controller on the right is rated for 40 amps. So taking a look at the upper half of the controller, and the most prominent similarity we notice is the same pair of inductors on both. The inductors are epoxied into place the exact same way. We have the same pair of 10 gauge wire. It appears to be the same brand wire. We have the same ring terminals and we have the same spade terminals. So in my personal opinion, uh, these inductors mounted on here are exactly the same. The one on the left does have a part number, but I don't see any part numbers on the right to verify that statement. 
And I will say that I am not a big fan of these spade connectors. I will show you why here. Look how black they are on this PCM60X. That tells me that they got very hot at some point. You can see how it's translucent blue here. That's how it's supposed to look, but they are black. And if I pull them off of the controller on the right, which hasn't been used yet, this is how they're supposed to look when they're new. So I really wish they would have secured the left half with screws because uh, these spade terminals are a failure point in my opinion. So again, we have the same four pin connector here for the communications port. A two pin connector which isn't connected anywhere on either controller, so I don't know what that's actually for. And we have the same 11 pin header up here. And on both controllers, it is labeled two panel. And again, we have the same uh, five pin header. I know you can't really see it because of the cabling. So from the side here, we have the same yellow transformer. However, we have a few additional components. We have another raised circuit board here that doesn't exist here. We have a raised transistor that doesn't exist over here. And over here, we have a raised transistor that doesn't exist over here. So in my opinion, these two transistors probably serve the same purpose. They look the same, they are mounted the same. They're just in different locations with an additional board on this one. So yeah, that's really about it. What I really want to do, what I'm most interested in, is I want to mount this communications module onto this uh, board that I pulled from the Sun Gold Power Inverter and see if I can communicate to it with the software used for uh, the MPP Solar controller. Alright guys, so what I've got here is a 12 volt SOK battery connected to the battery ports on the charge controller and my uh, 30 volt DC bench power supply connected for the solar input. I've got the communications board connected and I also connected the original MPP solar display so we can see if that turns on as well. Now, however, if this board is what I think it is, uh, it should also be capable of handling 12 and 24 volt systems. So we're going to see here uh, if this works. I haven't tested this yet. So first we'll turn on the battery. Now we'll go ahead and turn on our bench power supply here. Look at that, the controller turned on! So our PV input is set to 18.1 volts. You just heard the relays click on the controller, it should begin charging here. So we're going to double check the display here just to make sure it's not pumping 48 volts into that battery. And we can see battery voltage is set for 12.5 volts. And uh, the charging circuit has engaged on that controller and you can hear the power supply struggling a little bit. Uh, so we're going to stop this test for the time being. Let's go ahead and turn it down. And the charge controller shut off because it senses the PV voltage was disconnected. So next I want to go get my laptop, see if we can plug in this communications port, and I want to see what this controller is programmed for as the charge voltage and the parameters. Alright, so I've got the communications cable here for the MPP solar controller, and that's connected into an... Uh, I forget, I think this is RS-232, I forget if that's what it is or not, but it's a serial port. One thing to note is that this adapter is an FTDI uh, chip based adapter, the ones that don't have FTDI tend to have dropouts and uh, just aren't as reliable. I'm going to have to get it above 15 or so. Okay, controller is turned on. See the green light came on. Now we'll wait and see if the laptop recognizes what I've plugged into it. Oh, it does! Look at that! That's so cool! You can see it picked up on it almost instantly. It says COM10 and the serial number is all zeros there, which is interesting. So let's go ahead and open up the configuration and it is programmed for AGM battery type and it's programmed for a max charge of 60 amps look at that the inverter says it's rated for 40 amps but the controller is programmed for 60 amps okay um, so we have an absorption charge of 14.1 volts uh, and the way this works is on a 48 volt system you simply multiply that value by 4 so we have 14.1 times 4 it's going to charge our batteries up to 56.4 volts and on a lithium iron phosphate battery at 48 volts, that comes out to 3.52 volts per cell. So that's a very healthy charge voltage in my opinion. It's not quite 3.65, but uh, it's healthier for the batteries. And then we have a float voltage of 13.5 volts, and that comes out to times 4, a float voltage of 54 volts, or in a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, that's 3.37 volts per battery. Down further we see battery equalization is disabled, that's good, we never want to equalize a lithium iron phosphate battery. BTS temperature sensor is disabled because we don't have the port, so it's set to zero. Any value other than zero will enable that functionality. Alright, so that was definitely a successful test, and I can say with what I feel is confidence that those two controllers are pretty much exactly the same. 
just different revisions of each other. Again, one is approximately three to five years old and the other one is brand new, so we do expect some differences, but in my opinion, they're pretty much the same. It is incredibly cool that I can take the MPV Solar you know, communications port and display and connect them to that controller and configure it and look at the settings and things like that. I do believe in my opinion that it's okay to use this controller with a lithium iron phosphate battery since the voltages are set uh, below the maximum of lithium iron phosphate. However, I really wish they would have included the little board in this inverter that allows you to communicate with the charger so you can set the parameters that you want. And all that would have entailed is this little tiny board here. You don't even need this black part of this mounting bracket, just this little tiny board attached to the front of the inverter with this port poking through that you can connect to. That's all you needed and the two cables that come out of here. And that can't possibly cost them any more than 20, 25 cents to add in. And that would be a huge benefit and a huge selling point, in my opinion, to this inverter to say that the user can purchase the inverter and then can manually configure the charge parameters. But as it sits, it's pretty much just a charge controller stuck in the inverter that, as it seems to me, was uh, intended to say as a selling point that it has an MPPT solar charge controller. But yeah, I have no problems with it. It's, it's a fantastic charge controller. I've got three of those PCM60Xs, again, three to five years on each one, and they've been rock solid since. So yeah, this was definitely an interesting thing to take out side by side and compare. I'm glad we were able to test it. Uh, any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.